Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna do a platform review of Charles Schwab. In the event that you were interested in opening a brokerage account with them, this video is gonna be a tutorial of all of their services. Additionally, I'm gonna show you my current investments. I've got about $6,000 invested in stocks and I'm currently building a 30 stock portfolio. Uh, if you're watching this video because you just wanna know how to buy or sell your first stock with Charles Schwab, I made another video just doing a simple tutorial how to buy a stock on their platform. But today we're gonna to talk about literally everything else. The first question you might have is why Charles Schwab? They're not paying me to endorse them in any way. I just personally enjoy their services. The reason why is because these smaller online trading apps like M1 Finance or Robinhood or Webull, they're not full service banks. They don't offer literally all the services that you would expect from a, um, a big bank. Additionally, other big banks, maybe like Fidelity or Vanguard, those uh, platforms were designed to sell mutual funds. Those platforms make their money from mutual funds, whereas Charles Schwab was originally founded to sell you stocks. So uh, they do offer mutual funds now, but their core services have always been around providing stock investors with the most current and useful information, which is why I'm choosing to use them for my private brokerage account. To start, let's go through their intro page and then I'll log on and I'll show you my uh, portfolio. But if you just go to the top, it says, what do we offer? And they offer literally everything. They offer you individual, joint, retirement, corporate, college savings accounts, IRAs. And as you can see, this is all of the products they offer. They offer literally anything that any big bank would offer. You can also get uh, checking and savings accounts with them. I highly recommend their checking accounts. There's no minimum, there's no fees. Uh, their, their international uh, debit card is fantastic because when traveling abroad, you can pull out currency in a, um, you can pull out money in a foreign currency and there's no fee associated with the transaction. And something you should know is that when you want to use Charles Schwab's platform, there's actually several different kinds. When you click on trading platforms and tools, it'll show you that there's actually uh, more than one way that you can do stuff. There is the web browser, which is what I'm showing you today. And then obviously there's the mobile trading if you're on a, a tablet or a phone, but then they actually do offer software and the software is called Street Smart Edge. And I haven't downloaded it yet, but it has like CNBC built in and it'll give you um, like a customizable grid. Uh, for professional traders, day traders, uh, they like downloading this software. If you're a Charles Schwab um, client, you can download this and then uh, you know trade like the pros. Real quick, we can go to what we charge and see their pricing. Uh, spoilers, it's zero dollars on a lot of stuff. What we care about, uh, obviously, is stocks and ETFs. This was a recent change as of a couple months ago because Robinhood put pressure on the larger banks. They've all moved to a $0 commission on trades for stocks and ETFs. And for that reason, uh, when I buy and sell stocks now, I kind of just buy one at a time. Uh, there's no charge or fee, so it doesn't really bother me. You can uh, scroll down and you can click on whatever you want to see what fees are associated with um, maybe like a retirement account, obviously $0 for 401k or IRAs. Uh, but yeah, it'll, 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 they have all their pricing up front. The Y Schwab tab is just their advertising, uh, saying why you should get them. We can go ahead and skip that. And if we click on insights, this is uh, kind of fun. They have a lot of, um, articles that you can read about the stock market or their services. They also do offer podcasts. If you are really a, just a news junkie and you want uh, as much listening information as you can get. Uh, you can click on these and you can download their podcasts and listen to them. At this point, I'm gonna log on and I can show you what it looks like when you're actually logged on to your brokerage account. Once you log in, it'll show you this uh, entrance page talking about your personal value. I put $1,000 on Charles Schwab last November and then I didn't do anything with the account for three months. Uh, but you'll see it, there's these giant upticks. That's whenever I made a deposit, uh, but you can switch personal value to investment income. And then it shows you how much you've made off of either interest or dividends over time. I only recently started buying stocks this month, so I've only made $2 in dividends so far. However, it's really cool because it'll project out uh, based on my current portfolio holdings, it projects that I will make about $85 worth of dividends this year. I do plan on adding more, so that'll be fun seeing this go up. 
Go to the top and click on trade and it'll show you everything that you can buy and sell with Schwab, stocks, options, mutual funds, bonds, CDs, futures, IPOs. My account balance is only about $6,000, so I've only ever done stocks and ETFs. Uh, but once my account gets larger, uh, I could consider trading options or futures. Um, I'm not interested with mutual funds at, the, at this moment with Charles Schwab, but you never know in the future. A really great resource with Charles Schwab is if you go over to trading tools, uh, you can click on any one of these and it'll bring up this new uh, kind of like drop down menu where uh, there's a lot of great information here, getting started, um, trade source, uh, street smart edge. Basically it, it's, a, it's, the, it's the platform's tutorial to teach you how to use it. So if you're brand new to Charles Schwab or brand new to investing, you can click around on this tab and there should be uh, a lot of good information how to get started. The next tab we're gonna check out is research and there's a lot of uh, things you can do here and this is why Charles Schwab is so fantastic. Just the amount of research and information that they're gonna throw at you. If we first go to markets, uh, this will basically give you all the news resources uh, available through Charles Schwab. Literally, you will never run out of things to read or learn about stock market and investing. So if you want to focus on uh, U.S. markets or internationals, or if you want uh, information on futures, if you go to the top, you can click on stocks, and then this will give you all of their information about stocks. So you started with research, and then you went to stocks, and then you have this uh, next toolbar where it gives you overview, and then Schwab stock list, charts, screeners, uh, compare stocks. This is where you can start doing some really cool stuff. Uh, let's click on Schwab stock lists. And this is current as of a couple days ago, but Schwab is basically telling all of their investors what their highest equity rated is for their companies. So right now they're giving an A rating to all of these uh, companies like Best Buy or ConocoPhillips. And then if you go over here, you can either click on some charts to see uh, what's going on with this individual company, or you can click on a PDF, which will give you their detailed summary reports of what's going on with this company. So I just clicked on a random company, Copa Holdings. Uh, this is what their share price has done the last uh, month or so. And uh, here is their PDF. We can, we can zoom in and it'll literally give you all of the information that they evaluated in order to give uh, this company this A rating. Of course, Charles Schwab is just one uh, brokerage company giving ratings. If you go to analysts ratings, you can then see what the Argus rating, the CFRA, Credit Suisse, Ned Davis, Reuters rating. These are different rating agencies that review uh, and investigate stocks. And Schwab, I'm assuming, pays them in order to uh, compile all their information to compare their rating uh, to these other rating companies of these individual stocks. We can also click on price performance in order to see how they've done recently or in the past. We can click on fundamentals and it gives you more analytics of these companies that Schwab is currently recommending. And uh, you can also click on valuation. Let's go to screeners. And if you've never used a screener before, it's basically like a search engine for whatever you're trying to find, either stocks, bonds, or ETFs. And this is really cool because you can go to, for example, dividends, and then you can just search for what, uh, what are having upcoming dividends in the next seven days. It says there's 111 stocks uh, with the dividend coming up in the next seven days. Click view 111 matches. And then these are all the companies that are coming up soon that are gonna be paying a dividend. And it even gives you the X dividend date, which is what you need to be holding the stock on that date in order to get the dividend payout, which usually comes a couple days or a couple weeks later. Let's go ahead and uncheck the dividends and then you can go down to analyst ratings. And if we want, we can search for just Schwab equity rating and they have a rating system of F through A. We search for A and currently there are 266 uh, stocks that Charles Schwab rates as their best. Uh, if you don't necessarily want to go with Charles Schwab's recommendations, you can uncheck this and for example, go with Morningstar. Morningstar is a very popular rating agency for stocks. We can go ahead and click on what stocks are they giving a five star rating, view 283 matches and you can go through individually all of these companies and then decide if that's a good stock for you. Another cool way to search for stocks is to go to valuation and maybe you wanna search for 
Price to earnings ratio, usually a lower PDE ratio is good. So we can just search for what are all the stocks offering a PDE ratio of less than 10. There's uh, 1,462. And uh, generally, these are the um, stocks that are basically a good buy at this time. However, there's, all, there's always additional factors to consider. For example, American Airlines is currently at 2.5, but American Airlines might go bankrupt. Next tab we can go to is compare stocks. And this is a lot of fun because if you just want to compare, you know, for example, Disney versus Apple versus Amazon versus maybe uh, let's do Twitter <laughs> and then uh, compare them. It'll give you all of the information uh, and analytics of these companies side by side and even their ratings. Uh, but if you want, this is pretty fun. You can do a uh, chart comparison. And if you were to have uh, invested an identical amount in all four of these companies six months ago, this is how your investment would have performed over the last six months. For fun, we can go ahead and zoom out to five years. Of course, Amazon is way, way up 400% and Twitter doesn't really do anything. The next product you might wanna check out at the top is exchange traded products. This is ETFs, not just Charles Schwab's ETFs, which they do uh, want you to buy, but all ETFs publicly bought and sold on the New York Stock Exchange. You can go to a screener, for example, and then if you're looking for just a certain sector ETF, commodities or currency ETF, fixed income ETF, you can uh, search for these here. Likewise, you can go to the compare tab and you can compare different uh, ETFs. Let's go ahead and just try a couple. We got SPY. Uh, this is, I think, the largest S&P 500 index fund. And then we've got IVV. This is Fidelity's. And then we got VOO. This is Vanguard's. So these are all S&P 500 index funds, uh, ETFs. And you can go ahead and compare what is their expense ratios. Uh, Vanguard is the lowest. And then you've got uh, how they performed. For fun, let's go ahead and then click on performance and charts. And they all should be basically the same. They're the same ETF. They have the same uh, algorithm buying and selling stocks. So all of their numbers, yep, are pretty much comparable. When you go to the chart view, they basically overlap because once again, the point of an S&P 500 index fund is just to track the uh, S&P 500. Okay guys, I've clicked on my brokerage account and I gotta be careful not to show you my account number, but I just wanted to give you a quick snapshot of my current portfolio holdings. I've selected 30 companies that I feel have outperformed the market average the last couple, uh, last five or six years. And there's a lot you can do once you have it in this grid format. So for example, it's sorted by symbols currently. You can sort by name if you want. I can sort by percent of account. So my largest holdings is actually Sherman Williams. I only own one share, but the current share price is $471. So it's an expensive stock. If we sort by quantity, I currently have four shares of Cisco. However, the share price for that is only $46. So it only makes up less than 3% of my account. On the far right, I include the information, the X dividend date and the last dividends. And then this right here says reinvest dividends. If you select yes for reinvesting your dividends, then you won't pay uh, short term capital gains tax. And then it just automatically will buy you more fractional shares because I've only been buying stocks this month. I don't have any fractional shares yet, but eventually this will show you something like 4.0012. You can't purposely buy fractional shares yet with Charles Schwab. They're going to enable this feature sometime this year. But when you reinvest dividends, you will start getting fractional shares of these companies. If we go ahead and sort by X dividend date, it'll show me what the upcoming dividends will be. Today is April 7th. So the next uh, X dividend date, my portfolio will be MasterCard 48. If I did have extra money and I were to be putting it in my account, then I probably would buy shares of the companies that have um, dividend payouts coming up soon. And the nice thing about this uh, portfolio view is everything is adjustable. So if I go up to the settings icon, I can deselect uh, stuff that maybe I don't wanna look at. Maybe if I don't wanna look at, let's see, reinvest dividends or the dividend yield or the last dividend day. Let's say I don't even care about dividends. You can hit apply and then you can remove all of those columns. 
Additionally, let's say I don't want percent of account first, I want quantity, so I can go to uh, settings, and then you just click and drag, move it around, hit, hit apply, and then uh, quantity is now at the front and instead of percent of account. Or let's say, you know, for fun, you want percent account to be all the way on the right, click and drag, hit apply, it's now over here. And then of course, any stock that you're invested in, there's a hyperlink next to its name. If you just click on it, it'll bring up uh, basically kind of like a um, research center for that individual stock. So it'll give you all the charts. You can look at the ratings from all the different rating agencies. You can look at their earnings, which is really nice if you want to see how is this company, for example, Apple, been performing the last three years. Literally all the information about their dividends and uh, <laughs> any information about an individual stock that you can want, Charles Schwab puts it all together in one place for you. Okay guys, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up so the algorithm knows it's good. In addition, uh, consider subscribing to my channel. I post weekly about military and finance topics, but I'm really into uh, investing given the conditions of the market currently. If you have any comments or questions, leave me one down below. I love hearing from you guys. And until the next video, take care.